So in this last video about the finite quantum well model, we're going to talk about the odd states. Um, because initially when we were solving this, we said that uh, for solving the Schrodinger equation for a symmetric potential, uh, the states inside the well could be either even, in which case they looked like cosines. Well, that's an ugly cosine. Uh, or they could be odd in which case they looked like signs. So they were, they were odd. They had, uh, if this was our x equals zero, the sine of minus x is equal to minus sine of x. They're anti-symmetric about the origin. Uh, and we've always been working with the even states, so the cosine states. And the reason for this is because uh, this state will be our ground state. Um, it has no nodes, and so this is the lowest energy state. But if we want to worry about other states, so for example, the second excited state, or the third, or the fourth, or so on, uh, we also need to consider the odd states. And so how do we do this? Um, well, initially, when we applied our boundary conditions, we assumed that the we had a cosine of kx, we differentiated that, we got a sine, and then we divided the two equations by each other, and we ended up with a tangent. And so this time, instead, we're going to divide. So instead, we're going to have a sine function. We're going to differentiate, get a cosine function. And then when we divide the two equations by each other, we're going to get a cotangent function or actually we're going to get a negative cotangent function. And so all the other work we did was still uh, exactly the same. It's just now we've got a couple different sets of curves. So we've got y is equal to x tangent of x, uh, just as before, and these are the even states. And it's unfortunate that they're called the even states because these are actually the states where uh, our quantum number n equals one, n equals three, and so on. Uh, they're just even in the sense that the cosine is an even function. Uh, and we've also got y equals minus x time, times cotangent of x. And in addition to these two curves, uh, we have x squared plus y squared equals r naught squared. So where these two curves intersect this curve, uh, we have solutions to the Schrodinger equation. We have available states. And so if we plot that, if we plot all these functions, my pen appears to be running out of ink. <laughs> um, if we plot first the circle function, well, it's, it's just gonna look like a circle with radius of r naught. And so this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis. If we plot our even functions, uh, the first one's gonna start at the origin and it's gonna look something like this, and it's gonna asymptote at pi over two, and then it's gonna repeat itself uh, by starting at pi and then asymptoting at three pi over two and so on and so on. Now our minus x cotangent x function is actually going to start at pi over two, and it's gonna look very similar. I, I've sort of drawn it quite ugly here. Let me try again. Um, it's gonna look very similar just graphically to this x tangent of x function. And I would recommend you do actually plot it on your computer just to, to verify with yourself that that is the case. And then this is gonna asymptote at a value of pi, which is when our next even function starts turning on. So we sort of have an alternating between an even state, an odd state, an even state, an odd state, and so on and so on. And so if you want to know, for example, uh, how many states a quantum well supports, um, you do actually care about both the even states and the odd states. And so you need to consider, okay, where are all the points where this circle intersects one of these curves? Where it intersects these white curves, we've got an even solution. Where it intersects these green curves, uh, we've got an odd solution or a sinusoidal solution. And the total number of, uh, so this is the n equals one state. This would be the n equals two state. And this is the n equals three state and so on and so on.
And I find just for practical purposes, it's really helpful to remember the asymptotes of these curves, which basically come down to remembering the asymptotes of the tangent function uh, or the cotangent function, um, which is just when, uh, so for example, when sine, the tangent is sine over cosine, um, whenever the argument of this cosine, actually, sorry, this is, uh, don't want to avoid confusion. Um, X here is our unitless variable. Uh, which was equal to KL over 2. Um, so when X becomes pi over 2, cosine becomes 0, and this N equals 1 tangent function starts to go to infinity. Similarly, for the cotangent function, which is just cosine of X over sine X, uh, when X starts to approach pi, uh, this function, this cotangent function, starts to approach infinity, or negative infinity but we were taking negative cotangent uh, and so we start to we asymptote to pi and so on and so on for future tangents and cotangents and so the value of this r naught the value of this circle or the the radius of this circle as it gets smaller uh, we'll have fewer supported states as it gets larger uh, we'll have more supported states and the intersection of the circle with each of these curves always gives us the energy of our states. And I'll just leave you with one final note about the finite potential well model. Um, we said initially that we were interested in solving not only for the energy of a state, so the energy, for example, of the ground state, but we also wanted to know uh, what the coefficients of the wave function what the wave function is. So in this region, it's a times e to the minus alpha x. Uh, in this region, it's, let's say, b times cosine of kx. And in this region, it's a times e to the, my, oh, sorry, this left-hand one should be a e to the plus alpha x because it's decaying off to the left-hand side, so more negative x. Um, and so we wanted to find these coefficients b and a, not just the energy. Because we have alpha uh, because we know the energy and we have k similarly because we know the energy but what about a and b well if we apply a boundary condition so this is x equals zero uh, this is x equals minus l over two and uh, this is not the x in the previous graph so this is not the unitless x but this is actually the coordinate value x so position um, we know that these two since the wave function has to be continuous we know that this function has to equal this function right at the boundary of the quantum well. So a e to the minus alpha l over 2 has to equal b times cosine of kl over 2. And so now we know alpha, we know k, we know l. Uh, we can solve for b over a. Uh, it's just e to the minus alpha l over 2 over cosine kl over 2 and so that's perhaps is uh, not terribly satisfying for you because well we just have a ratio we don't actually have b or a um, and there is indeed one final thing that you would need to do if you wanted to calculate actual values for a and b which is actually pretty rare um, it's generally not interesting to know exactly what the values of these coefficients are um, because the energies are generally the most relevant quantities but if you did want to do that, uh, what you would need to do is take the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the magnitude of the wave function squared. And so you'd this would be a piecewise integral. So first you'd integrate this exponential part, then you'd integrate this cosine part, then you'd integrate this exponential part. And this has to be equal to one for a properly normalized wave function. Uh, for, for the wave function to be interpreted as a probability distribution or the wave function magnitude squared. And so performing this integral will let you solve for A and B directly. Um, or uh, in addition with this equation, we'll let you solve for A and B. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.